Good afternoon. Hope everybody's well. Um, certainly the weather's nice in the northwest of England, which is good. Um, good afternoon from Chris, Natalie and Steve at Vulcan Marine Services. And welcome to the first of a number of lunch and learn sessions that we are going to present on the subject of the link float pontoon system, which will cover potential uses and the safe installation and operation of the system in the marine environment. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Steve Marshall, Director at Volker Stevens Specialist Businesses. <clears throat> I'm nearly 40 years experience in the civil engineering industry, including 30 years delivering projects in a marine environment. Chris Shorick has joined me. He is our Marine Technical Manager and manages our marine operations, having worked in the marine and shipbuilding industry worldwide for over 35 years. <clears throat> We're also joined by Natalie uh, Kavanagh. Uh, she is our communications business partner and is responsible for pulling this event together. Thanks to uh, Natalie. We'll be sharing this presentation, which I hope will give you an interesting insight into the capabilities of the link float system. Future presentations will cover design of permanent structures, load out and ballasting, temporary berths and work barges, floating bridges, transport and marine operations. If you would like any additional subject matter to be added, uh, please let us know through the comments. As an introduction, Volca Marine Services previously traded as Volca Brooks for nearly 90 years and supplied plant fabrication and other services to the UK construction market out of our five acre site in Morecambe. At the end of 2021, Volca Steven restructured its business, creating Volca Steven Specialist Businesses Limited, which trades as Volca Marine Services, Volca Site Services and Volca Ground Engineering. We still employ the same team as previously and operate out of our manufacturing and maintenance facility in Morecambe in Lancashire. To note, we've been manufacturing and operating the link float pontoon system for over 20 years. Next slide, please, Natalie. So a bit of etiquette um, for the, the presentation. So please mute your microphone when you're not talking. Uh, if possible, please turn on your video when you are speaking. Um, just to note, the call will be recorded. If you have a question, please post this in the call chat bar or raise your hand. Um, remember to unmute when you want to talk, which is always a good thing. Uh, and this is a, an open forum where everyone is equal. And please be respectful when you uh, when you're addressing people. Uh, and please share the knowledge from these sessions with your with your colleagues. So next slide, please, Natalie. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. The aim today, as Steve said, is just to provide you all with a good overview of the link float pontoon system. And the agenda for the, the first session is relatively simple. It will go through the concept, the potential uses, capacities, and our new configurator tool. Next slide, please, Natalie. The link float, the Unifloat concept was originally designed by Thomas Storey and Sir David Bailey of Bailey Bridges. Indeed, the development of the concept included supporting Bailey Bridges on floating piers. The military had a need for a swift and simple system of providing access over water and for providing a ferry system. The pontoons were utilised by both the Army and the Navy. Some were strapped to vessels for quick release and used as landing craft and barges, while others were used to bridge rivers. The system primarily today is used in the civilian role and can be used to provide working platforms for access and supply pontoons for the transport of materials and plant and can be specified as both temporary and permanent structures. Next slide, please, Anthony. You got next slide, please, Natalie. Thank you. Um, the design and manufacturer was subsequently developed by V and M Barb in the 1980s under the name Link Float. In 2000, Vulcan Marine Services bought the rights to Link Float system from V and M Barb, and we continue to develop and manufacture similar and compatible units today. 
These units that we sell worldwide with clients as far away as Norway, Sweden, the Falklands, New Zealand and Southern Ireland. With those rights, we also purchase the manufacturing jig, which every pontoon passes through. This ensures compatibility with of what we're producing today will fit what was produced 30 years ago. Specifications can be altered to suit conditions. We've delivered permanent marine structures with 25 year design life, utilizing grade 355 steel and glass flake epoxy paint systems. Other upgrades can be non-skid decks, enhanced cathodic protection, etc. I will not go through the complete list on the um, screen currently, but the main things, key, key points are it's road transportable, transportable, has high capacity, and it's very quick and easy to mobilize. Three guys could mobilize 20 pontoons in a day. Next slide, please. The system was designed to be easily transported and erected with minimal labour, sufficient to carry 100 tonnes or, or support 70 tonne capacity crawler crane. Designed to be connected easily and safely on the fire if necessary. The integral gunnels, which are the box sections that run along the sides of the uh, pontoon, you can see the top of the pontoon, which are pre-drilled allow winches, handrails, ladders, timber mats, bollards to be secured quickly and efficiently to the units. The pontoons can be manufactured without these, so there's flat decks with no trip hazards. Um, I've touched on quality with all, all the pontoons going through the jig. We, we are accredited to UK CA and CE standards for the manufacture of the units, accessories and associated structural steelwork. And we operate to ISO 9001, ISO 4501 and 14001. We can produce 3D models which are compatible with BIM standards. And, and just while I'm on this slide, um, if you see the pontoon there, so around the top of the pontoon there is 14 couplers and around the bottom there is 14 hook lugs. The seven male and seven female. So when the pontoons are being mobilized, they're hooked together and then a steel pin is driven through the coupler at the top. And that's how they're assembled. There's no clamps, there's no, nothing further. So the pins are by the couplers on chains, they're picked up and just hammered in to secure the pontoons. Next slide, please, Natalie. All right, thanks, Chris. Um, so now we're going to have a look at um, the many uses of the pontoon system and reflect on a number of projects that we've delivered over the last few years. The first slide shows a, a, a contract that we delivered uh, for Canary Wharf contractors in uh, in the centre of London. And we, we were contacted by the, the, the contractors to design a temporary roadway uh, loadout platform to support the construction of the highest residential tower in Canary Wharf. Um, the site was very constrained. Um, there was no uh, or very little road access and certainly no lay down area on the site. Um, however, the site was very close to a, a key edge with uh, with some uh, some dock. Um, so the contractor wanted to use that space to uh, to supply the materials to the project. So they required three fully loaded articulated wagons to be able to access the roadway at any one time, which equated to 120 tonnes of, uh, of loading. And access to the pontoons would be via link span bridges attached to the key edge. We developed and designed a solution which used specially constructed road deck sections that sat onto the deck of standard link float pontoons. In all, 84 pontoons were used to construct the floating platform and mooring tubes were cantilevered out from the key edge from mass concrete foundations to allow the pontoon to move as the dock water levels varied. This project design received a commendation from the Institute of Structural Engineers. Canary Wharf contract has decided to purchase a number of the pontoons for this project, which we then subsequently bought back ourselves and placed into the higher fleet. There were many constraints on the project, including uh, the rise and fall of the dock water levels, um, restricted loading on a historic quayside, 
and of course underneath the site were uh, um, a, a system of uh, underground uh, railway tunnels so we couldn't use spud legs or or, or, uh, or mass anchor systems to uh, to to hold the the uh, the, the pontoon in position therefore we uh, we can't leave it um, um, spuds off the uh, off the key side a separate walkway and road restraint system were included in the design together with anti-skid surfacing due to the size of the platform Hinged interconnectors were provided in the pontoon layout to reduce the forces through the pontoons and allow the deck to flex. We are currently in the detailed design phase of a similar project to temporarily divert an access road around a construction site in the south. The road is to travel onto a canal and then return to the bank. To do this, we are again using link spans and road decks on our pontoons to provide the solution. We're also developing a proposal for a temporary floating bridge over a river in the northeast of England for the construction of a flood alleviation scheme. Next slide, please, Natalie. So not all floating bridges are that complex. Simple bridges for construction plant can be provided using standard pontoons, ramp sections and timber deck panels. Here you see a pontoon bridge uh, being used to provide access for the construction of a new road bridge over a rail, canal and river. Balfour Beatty approached us for this project as they needed to access a strip of land between a railway and canal to construct the pier for the new bridge. The bridge was required to carry construction traffic only, but one of the constraints was that we had to remain, um, or, or the canal had to remain open for vessels to pass. During the construction period, um, so as part of that, we proposed to install a swing bridge, which rotated about a, a, a pile in the river, which you can see um, on the left hand photograph, just on the on the uh, the right hand of the bridge. The pontoons were designed to rotate, and this this was originally detailed to be winch operated. However, um, as a standby vessel had to be provided, it was uh, it was more appropriate to uh, to move the. Um, um, the, the the bridge uh, in and out across the river uh, using the uh, the standby vessel. This uh, this sort of demonstrates the um, the original military concept for the for the uh, the, the pontoons and that it was uh, it was designed to simply um, span a river and uh, and allow um, um, a tank transporters to be uh, moved across from uh, from one side to the other. On long spans, hinged interconnectors are introduced to enable the bridge to flex, while spud poles and pontoons or deadweight anchor systems can be utilised to hold the bridge in position. Um, hinged interconnectors, spud pontoons and spud poles are all part of the standard accessory range available either in our higher fleet or to purchase. Moving on. Natalie, please. So not only do we uh, use the, the system to provide uh, bridges, we also uh, provide permanent and temporary berths for mooring vessels. Here we see a permanent berth provided for the, uh, the DIO at May Harbour in the Falkland Islands. This project included 18 standard pontoons, a link span, pile guides, fendering, bollards, ladders and a hardwood deck. The scheme was delivered by Volker Steven as part of a major project in the South Atlantic with fabrication and fit out of the, uh, the, the mooring pontoon carried out in Morecambe before shipment to the Falklands. This berth is one of the ones that had upgraded steel specification and paint system to provide a design lit, beg your pardon, of 25 years. Next slide, please, Natalie. So not only do we provide permanent berths, but we can also provide temporary berths for river traffic and construction plant. The photo on the left shows a recent project we delivered on the River Ouse in York. We worked with Vinci during the tender stage uh, for the, uh, the tender for the Guildhall project in York, looking at marine logistics on the River Ouse. York streets surrounding the site were not wide enough to allow access for wagons and all materials for the project, including the spoil, was to be managed down the river. Getting the logistics right was key to the success of the project. 
A pleasure boat company also moored their fleet of craft next to the site. So the first hurdle to cross was to provide a suitable temporary mooring for the displaced vessels during the construction work. And we also provided a temporary berth that had to be suitable for construction barges up to 250 tonnes capacity. The solution was to provide two berths held on a system of dead weight anchors. Spuds were not suitable in this location due to the exposed bedrock and the risk that the, uh, the spuds would slide on the rock during uh, uh, flood conditions and moorings could not be taken back to the shore as there was the uh, listed guild hall building which could have been disturbed by any anchoring on the uh, on the key edge the solution was designed and delivered using a system of dead weights and chains and the, su the system successfully withstood two seasons of flooding on the river ooze as part of the project we also provided crew tugs and materials uh, sorry, a material supply barge which worked between Queen's Staith and the Guildhall site. The photo on the right shows another project which is in Glen Malham on the west coast of Scotland. At Glen Malham, pontoons were used to provide temporary berths for small craft using the construction of a new facility for the DIO. The pontoons were accessed via a 30 metre gangway which we also supplied. And as you can see in the photograph, this this um, this facility was used by the Royal Marines on exercise on occasions, a nod to the military heritage of the system. Using water courses and canals to move materials in inner city environments is a great way to reduce vehicle movements, pollution and congestion from towns and cities. So moving on to the next one, please, Natalie. So this is another semi-permanent um, berth for uh, construction traffic for the um, uh, the Olympic Village in London. Um, and we were contracted to provide berths for barges. Um, and again, pile guides were incorporated into the, um, into the, uh, the design of the pontoons um, together with timber decks, bollards and fendering. Next slide, please. So not only do we provide temporary berths, but we can also provide craft um, using the, the pontoon system. In the past, we've worked with Hydromaster to provide propulsion units, which can be used to drive construction barges or can be used to power landing craft in conjunction with the link, spawn, link, link float ramp system. These have been used for construction, uh, military transport, and also to provide ferries in Africa. Indeed, we ran a fleet of Hydromaster shuttle units ourselves to power construction pontoons um, in the past. On the right hand side, um, on, the, on the top of the, uh, the photographs, you can see um, a, a permanent solution for a vessel which was provided in Poole Harbour, where the, the Fursey Squirrel operates as a ferry utilising link floats as the deck. This is fitted with propulsion units, a raised wheelhouse and bespoke ramps. The vessel transports vehicles and people to an island in the harbour and has recently undergone a full overhaul. Its deck pontoons were, uh, were stripped and refurbished and replaced at our facility in Morecambe. This vessel was the inspe inspiration for a similar but smaller vessel, the Vodka 3, which was delivered by us last year to an operator who carries out environmental services also in Poole Harbour. On the top left, you can see pontoons being used by the military as a self-propelled landing craft stroke ferry. The temporary berth alongside, connected to the shore with a panel bridge, is also built up of link float units. Note the ramp system on the bow and stern of this vessel, which can be used for tracking plant onto the pontoon from a ramp or from the foreshore. These ramps are standard items which can be operated by a hand winch and are available in our fleet for hire and purchase. The bottom left photograph shows a vessel which was provided to the Ugandan Wildlife Authority. In this instance, our pontoons were provided to Hydromaster who constructed and fitted out the ferry. Next slide, please. So in terms of use as a work barge, 
The pontoon system has a relatively high deck load capacity of 8.9 tonnes per square metre if you, uh, you utilise timber mats. This allows the pontoon to be used in heavy construction and civil engineering. And here we can see some typical uses such as a piling barge, material transport, dredging and placing of rock. The pontoons can also be used to provide space for material storage, steel fixing and formwork preparation where land is scarce. The scheme on the left is an emergency piling project in the northwest of England. The River Winster at this point is very narrow and in order to float a 65 tonne excavator fitted with a Movax pile driver onto the pontoon and ensure the barge remains stable in all configurations, especially during the critical mobilisation stage, a detailed ballasting plan had to be developed and followed during the construction work. The barge was fitted with four spud poles, which are air inch operated. This held the pontoon in position during the piling operations and also during the mobilisation. The winches fit onto brackets with a line with the gunnels on the pontoons. This pontoon is fitted with full handrail and emergency ladders, which are also designed to fit into the standard pontoon gunnels. BMS managed all of the installation and mobilisation of the piling equipment for this project for Volker Steven, and we also provided the vessels and crew. The photo on the right is one of a number of setups we provided to Bam Nuttall for use on the River Thames. A number of barges were provided to this project, with pontoons reconfigured during the works to suit varying operational requirements, different size excavators, rock transport, muck moving, etc. The pontoons supplied materials and plant to the to the project. Cheers. Next slide, please, Natalie. Water courses can often be turned into an advantage as opposed to a hazard when accessing difficult to reach sites. The pontoon on the left was used to access the underside of a major bridge on the River Weir um, using a cherry picker. A number of barges were supplied to this project in various configurations to assist with deck installation together with pier cofferdam installation and scour protection placement. Again, we supplied the vessels which, used, which were used to manoeuvre the barges while winch operated spud poles were used to hold the pontoon in position. The units on the right were used in the construction of a hydroelectric power station on an island in the River Weaver near Chester. Pontoons were used to transport materials and equipment, including piling rigs, piles, a 65 ton crawler crane, excavators, 100 ton mobile crane, and finally, as you can see on the far right, the 20 ton Archimedes screw used to drive the turbine. Due to the nature of the site, which was on an island between the canal locks and the river, equipment logistics had to be carefully planned as there was little room on the island to land materials or maneuver once off the pontoons. Due to the size of the equipment and the tight site constraints, um, operations were closely supervised and controlled with detailed rams and ballasting plans produced and followed. This was a complex site with many restrictions and we worked closely with a number of key suppliers to ensure the project was a great success. Obviously road transportable pontoons can make and assist with marine logistics, keeping wide and heavy loads off narrow and congested roads. Next slide, please. Not now doing due not only do we get involved in, in the construction and logistics, uh, but we also get involved in demolition as well. Um, the first photograph on the left shows pontoons on hire to Kermac. Um, we worked with Kermac on the demolition of um, Trefer Pier on the north coast of Wales. And the pontoon here is held in location using a winch system and anchors. The pontoon supported an excavator, which was used to break up the timber pier and place the debris on the deck and then uh, the pontoon was transported back to the shore uh, for, uh, for removal of the uh, demolition spoil. Pontoons can also be used to provide crash decks during demolition and to collect runoff during cutting and grit blasting operations. We're currently working on the supply of a crash deck for a bridge demolition near Southampton at the moment. On the right, you can see a piling barge 
um, delivered to Volker 7 for piling operations at ASCII. We have standard layouts for supporting cranes and excavators up to 100 tonne capacity. These standard layouts can be tweaked to suit specific site and load conditions with the consultation of our naval architects and obviously detailed ballasting plans need to be produced if we go narrower or, uh, or uh, longer than, uh, than, uh, than the standard layouts. We're always happy to discuss arrangements with our customers and provide bespoke workable solutions for, for particular projects. Next slide, please. We recently supplied a higher fleet of, uh, of link float pontoons to our sister company in the Netherlands. Uh, the link float and unifloat are widely used across uh, across the uh, um, the Netherlands and Belgium, um, where there are huge fleets um, in operation. Here you can see our installation team uh, preparing barges for work on the Spoo Sluice on the Dronten Meer Dijk. The first project the pontoons were mobilised to when we sent them across to uh, to uh, um, Holland. You can see a large flat on the right hand side, you can see a large flat top is provided to support a crawler crane. However, this is supported by a sea of link float pontoons moored alongside. The link float barge provides a large area for steel fixing and for the storage of construction materials. This large link float pontoon could be broken down into sections to allow it to pass through a number of locks on its way to the construction site in pre-built sections. Note in the, in the Netherlands, the gunnels are often removed to provide flat decks, a facility we do offer in the UK on new build pontoons. Next slide. These are a couple of additional photographs um, showing other um, crane and support barges utilised uh, across the UK. On the left, there's a, 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 a crane barge uh, used in uh, in Loch Lomond up in Scotland, uh, and another support barge with an excavator on, um, supporting the uh, construction of a flood alleviation scheme uh, in Leeds with uh, with BAM nut holes. Next slide, please. So we often get involved in special projects, and this one was no exception. Um, during COVID in 2020. Uh, water care in New Zealand that is a water utilities provider we're looking to improve the reliability of the supply to Auckland at a time of expected drought they were looking to utilize standard pontoons to provide a floating extraction facility in the Waikato River to enable them to extract at all states of flow and deliver an additional 50 million litres of treated water per day Using teams and sharing models, we work with Brian Perry Siddles, the installers, MTL, the designers, and Watercare, the client, and utilised Hasconning here in the UK to deliver the pontoons in three months. The, the pontoons were built in the UK, trial assembled, and then shipped to New Zealand for their installation prior to the summer. It was a very agile project that started as eight pontoons. But as the design was being developed while we were manufacturing pontoons, it ended up increasing to 12 pontoons due to increases in weight. Um, but due to the pontoons being modular and all outfit being bolted, this was easily accommodated. There were minor changes to the standard pontoons. Some gunnels were removed, some were added. Non-skid paint was provided on the decks and there was enhanced cathodic protection. Um, so all the structure you see that's built up on the top right hand um, picture, everything there, all the pile clamps, all, all the structure is all just bolted off the gunnels and off beams that are bolted to the gunnels. So there was very little welding that was going to damage the paint once it was installed. Next slide, please. Pontoons are, are used um, um, frequently in uh, in bridge maintenance, construction, uh, installation, and removal. Um, this is another interesting project which uh, we delivered with uh, George Leslie 
uh, at Kettledon Reservoir. Here you see the pontoons used to jack up a bridge. This allowed access to uh, carry out concrete repairs to the, uh, the piers and also the bridge to be refurbished. Our winches and anchors were used to locate the pontoons and you can clearly see the hand winch frames on the four corners of the, the platform together with the fair leads on the photograph in the, in the left hand side. Again, these fair lead frames and, uh, and hand winches are designed to fit simply into the gunnels on special frames. Pontoons can be ballasted to move underneath structures with a low air draft, um, or alternatively, you can build a jacking frame onto the deck and jack the structure up. Moving on to the next slide, please. Here's three other examples of pontoons used to support various stages of a, of a, a bridge project. On the right hand side, you can see um, a site investigation works up in Scotland. In the centre photograph, you can see a, um, a, 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 a bridge, um, a walkway bridge uh, being uh, transported to, uh, to site on, uh, on link float pontoons. And on the left hand side, you can see um, the pontoon that we provided to uh, Farron's Victor Boyk for the construction of the River Weir Spire Bridge. Uh, and that uh, pontoon was used um, throughout the construction phase for, for various operations, including supporting uh, construction of the, um, the coffer dam, um, installing um, uh, uh, scow protection, and also for accessing the deck during uh, the bridge installation. Moving on, Natalie. So a number of rural facilities con are constructed using uh, unifloats and link floats in ports and harbours around the UK. Uh, we've maintained existing structures and have also provided new pontoons for link span facilities. Our specialist crews undertake inspections and can carry out in situ repairs. And if not necessary, we can swap out individual pontoons um, uh, to, to, to repair structures. Due to the cellular nature of the, the link float link spans, this allows the owners to easily repair the pontoon if it's damaged by errant vessels. On the left, you can see ABP's facility in Southampton, which is constructed using 1.8 metre deep units. And on the right, you can see the White Link Ferry Terminal at Limington, which uses standard 1.2 metre deep units to support the link span. Both of these structures have had pontoons replaced and refurbished by ourselves. Our jig in Morecambe is able to manufacture pontoons of either 1.2 metres or 1.8 metres deep. Moving on. Many of our projects are far from mundane. Um, we often work with star events and we've provided floating sound stages uh, video screens together with corporate entertainment facilities um, in, uh, in water courses on pontoons. One of our projects involved the provision of a Lido in London Docklands, which was installed with its own beach. You can see that in the, uh, the aerial photograph on the, uh, the right-hand side. Looks like a great place to relax in the summer, but not necessarily to go swimming. Next slide, please. Other events we've supported are the Thames Festival and Liverpool Giants. We've also floated birthday cakes for eBay, a house for Airbnb, and a floating Viking longship, bizarrely, that didn't float itself. Uh, and we've also um, um, supported a number of animated giants. We work with a number of events providers to deliver bespoke solutions. Indeed, we're in process of building a floating sports pitch for the next project for the Thames. As all, of, as all of the schemes we have shown can involve the design of specialist towing and mooring arrangements and other specialist steel fabricated items, we fabricate all of these in-house in the facility in Morecambe. Next slide, please. Well, just looking 
quick overview of capacity. So generally the pontoons are capable of supporting nine tons of load, giving a free board of 225 millimetres. Um, but the, this should be confirmed with stability calculations as you need to be aware that you're working in a dynamic environment where there's going to be heel and trim. Um, so not, it's not like working on terra firma. The deck plates are capable of supporting wheel loads of 75.5 kilonewtons and maximum axle loads of 144 kilonewtons without the use of timber decking and spreader plates. The timber mats can be used to increase capacity up to 112 kilonewtons wheel loads or military track loads up to class 80, which is 8.7 newtons per centimetre squared. The gunnel bars, which is the box sections along the sides, are designed to support 209 kilonewtons vertically, spread over a 178 millimetre section at any position. If the load is placed over the main scantling frame, this can be increased to 279 kilonewtons. A vertical load of 40 kilonewtons can be applied to the gunnels. We have proved that mobile cranes up to 100 ton capacity could be operated on the deck and can provide platforms for 90 ton crawler cranes without the need for bespoke spreader frames. We can supply stability calculations, ballasting arrangements and story books that take you through tracking on plant, tracking off plant and how the plant is to be operated and any restrictions that need to be put in place. When using excavators and cranes, tie down positions are provided. OK, next slide, please, Natalie. We're in the process of developing a configuration tool which uh, will be available through the, the web page uh, in the next few weeks. Um, now this uh, configurator tool will allow people to um, to uh, look at the standard arrangements for, for different types of equipment. So if you wanted to float a 70 ton crane, it would show you what you would need uh, to float a 70 ton crane. Um, it can also be used to, uh, to build your own um, pontoon. Um, and also add um, various bits and pieces of equipment onto the deck layout. Um, once you've completed your your configuration, um, the, uh, the the configurator tool will message us um, with with the details of your plans, uh, and then you can uh, call or email to uh, to further discuss um, uh, uh, what your requirements are and uh, whether it's actually physically possible and whether it needs them. Um, any specialist uh, specialist stability calcs or uh, or structural strengthening so um this is uh, this is something that is coming and will be available in in the next uh, like i say in the next few weeks uh, so look out for the uh, for the notifications um and uh, you'll be able to play with uh, play with that uh, at your leisure and um, see how the uh, the link float system can work for you next slide please uh, Natalie. So just to summarise, why, why choose link floats? They've got high strength and high capacity. They're robust and have a good lifespan. We've got units in our hire fleet that are over 25 years old that we're still putting out today. They're very flexible. They're very easy to tailor to specific requirements. You know, if it's narrow river, you know, you, you can look at ballasting to reduce the width, etc. So very flexible. They're easy to transport. You'll get four standard pontoons on an Arctic. As we mentioned earlier, they're very quick and easy to mobilize. Three guys will mobilize two, 20 pontoons in a day. And there's lots of accessories that are easily fitted to the pontoons. So they either bolt to the gunnels or they connect to the lugs and couplers. So these accessories are handrails, winches, bollards, fenders, ramps, just to name a few. Um, so, so hopefully we've given you an overview of the um, link floats and uh, uh, 
brief summary of why why we believe it's a a good a good product. Next slide, please. That concludes the introduction to the link float system. Um, in the future, we plan to deliver a number of lunch and learn presentations, which will provide guidance on the safe use of pontoons, which can be applied across a number of pontoon and barge systems. Um, and invites to these will be sent out uh, as these are launched. And feel, please feel free to distribute the invite to your colleagues and contacts as you feel fit. Um, is there anybody got any questions? I, I can't see any hands up or uh, or anything in the chat. Is, is, does anybody want to chip in with a with a question on the system? Silence. I think we set everyone to sleep, Steve. <laughs> Anybody? Certainly know where we are. Um, well, uh, Vulcan Marine Services. Um, you know, um, you, you can contact us at uh, at Morkham if you if you think of any questions. Uh, uh, you know, uh, later on, or you or you want to raise anything. Um, you know, but uh, you, you know. We're certainly there to give uh, to give you guys any advice on, uh, um, uh, you know, on on uh, on the on the system or any other marine uh, marine uh, um, uh, equipment as well. You know, uh, we do operate a, a, a varied marine fleet up there. We've got uh, we're on tugs and uh, and work boats as well. You know, and we can advise on the on the use of those. Um, I do have a, a question there? What is the price of the standard setup? Um, it very much depends on the length of hire, the duration, and any any uh, any any additional equipment. But usually for a, a standard uh, pontoon, it uh, ranges about uh, ninety-five pounds a week per pontoon um, for for hire of the system. Although uh, those rates are negotiate negotiable depending on the length of the the, the hire. Does that answer your question, Grant? <laughs> Anybody else? Hi, Chris, Chris, yeah, yes, uh -huh. yeah. I'm going to yep. ask a question that I've asked Chris many times, but I'm going to do it for the information <laughs> of everyone else. And um, what's the minimum depth that was required for the use of a, a link float pontoon on on waters? Oh. When when the pontoons are unloaded, you're looking at three about three hundred millimeters, and then it depends on the operations you, you're doing from there. So if you're fully loaded, you would need a meter of water, but obviously you could be operating at seven hundred millimeters. It really depends on what you're doing and the setup. Okay. And then but that would, that would be your two extremes would be between 300 and a meter. OK, that's great. Thank you. Dan, I think uh, you 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 raised your hand there. I did, yeah. Following on yeah. from what Chris said, because uh, same as me, he's seen lots of opportunities to use these for, for river crossings and whatnot. Um, one thing that often uh, I find site teams are reluctant to employ these for crossings is if, if you have a uh, drier weather conditions and you end up bottoming the pontoons out which is um as i understand it a bit of a no-no we can damage the pontoons what, what's your stance on that is there a situation where that's acceptable or the the concept of the pontoons was that they would um they would support the lord um in uh, in dry conditions um however if you're going to if you're going to use the pontoons uh, while they're, they're grounded, uh, you need to you need to um, ensure that there are no obstructions underneath the pontoons that could potentially puncture them. Um, the other thing is if you've got any undulations in the uh, um, in the ground below the pontoons when it is uh, landed, um, you know you it, it can become unstable. So we don't recommend that you use the pontoons when they're when they're grounded. Um, however, they are designed to support, um, you know, 10 tons of load per, per unit uh, when they are grounded. However, I, I, you know, I would suggest, you, you know, you need some prepared bed um, to be able to do that. 
Yeah, so it's the difference between grounding out on a nice silty bed or something prepared or going down on some a couple of that's points. Right. That, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's probably um, something we can discuss case by case, but it's nice to know it's not a complete deal breaker. Yeah, no, no. We we supplied pontoons to Boscalis last year, and they were they were actually using them as platforms on the beach where they were pulling um, cables in. So that they had their cable pullers set up, they had the pontoons stacked too high and ballasted so they wouldn't float with the tide to keep their cable pullers out of the water. So, you know, it is possible to use them in different different ways. It's something that's crossed my mind before because we do a lot of working platforms down the sides of, of rivers for our flood defence work in Stevan. Um, and it's crossed my mind before whether you could make, a, as you say, a floating road or working platform and ground it out in the shallower water on a prepared bed um because usually we're building retaining walls for temporary precast blocks and then putting a load of aggregate in behind it that's quite a big operation to install move and obviously there's the environmental considerations so that might be worth having a chat about outside here just to see if we could look at the system to work around that Grant is asking for a copy of the presentation. Yes, we'll be able to share that with uh, with all the attendees. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Anybody else got anything they want to add? Sounds like we're going to give you 15 minutes of your lunch break back, yeah? <laughs> no, excellent. Um, well, I hope you found the presentation interesting. Um, we certainly look forward to seeing you at the next session. Uh, if you've got any comments or feedback, um, do drop us a line. Um, you know where we are up in, in Morecambe. Um, and if you would like to hear more about our products um, and services, please email the team. Um, we will be exhibiting at uh, the Hillhead Plant Show between the 21st and 23rd of June in 2022. Um, demonstrating the uh, the pontoon system to the, uh, um, the the marketplace, and I'd just like to, to thank you for your attendance today, and uh, hope we all uh, catch up with you soon. All right, enjoy the rest of your day.